for coming on. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, pleasure. So to get started, Nate, I wanted to run through how you ended up where you are, a bit of your history and story. Um, I hear you've had you've uh, you've had a few injuries in the past and um, a few interesting things that you've been able to heal and also, um, you know, the relevance to keto as well. So give me a little bit of a rundown of all that. Uh, okay. Well, I was always like the biggest kid. I was always the kid in the middle of the class picture that was like kind of chubby. <laughs> and, uh, you know, grew up an athlete in, in the Midwest in Minnesota. It's like a lot of like big biking people and, uh, a lot of like big football players in the NFL come from like the Midwest, like the tackles and those guys. So grew up in a huge football culture in uh, Minnesota. And um, I definitely had like aspirations to play in the NFL. And that was like my track. I was like uh, totally focused on just playing football and um, didn't really explore any of my intellectual capabilities. I just kind of like put myself in a box of like being an athlete. And like that was, you know, that was kind of like the, the most that I could offer to the world. And uh I got hurt. I had a bunch of injuries in college. I uh, ruptured a disc in my back. I had my shoulder reconstructed. I had knee surgery. And uh, I kind of like lost my identity. Mm. And it was really hard. Um, and then I ended up going to the school to like recover from my injuries um, called HealthWorks Institute in Bozeman, Montana, and studied body work. And uh, like went through a huge like transformation and kind of found a new direction in my life to like healing and helping people. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole time I was kind of like consuming a lot of alcohol. <laughs> so that was like a big part of like my story. Uh, and I didn't realize like, like how inflammatory foods and, and all these things were like really affecting like my pain. So I was mm -hmm. searching for cures in in just like physical movement and physical like body work and just like trying to study the body but i didn't realize like what i was putting in my mouth was like really affecting my pain mm -hmm. and um i basically kind of hit rock my own rock, rock bottom for alcohol use and this was like four years ago and um i started eating fat and turmeric because i had heard that that was good for inflammation mm -hmm. And uh, I started feeling a little bit better. And I oh. stopped drinking alcohol and started consuming fat and turmeric. And I was losing, I was like over 300 pounds. And um, I didn't, I never heard of ketogenic diet. I never heard of inflammatory food. And then I started reading more and learning about anti-inflammatory foods. And uh, yeah, I basically I had a friend who was like you're on a ketogenic diet I was like well I don't even know what that is and <laughs> so I peed on this strip and it was black and I, they're like you're in ketosis so then I, that opened up my whole lot my whole like perspective to like what I was actually doing in my physiology was really curing my my chronic pain mm -hmm. so and that's kind of like how I started like to be keto was like making delicious because it's delicious like ketogenic food is amazing Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it makes it so much easier to stay on when things are yummy right yeah so just kind of like hacking these like these little cravings and and finding like really yummy solutions to like being really like anti-inflammatory and feeling yeah. way better so. yeah awesome it's um you know I, i've heard a, a story you know stories like this before where you know you, you become it's it, it, part of what you do becomes your identity, like you said. And then when you have an injury from it, particularly sports or something that, um, you know, I, I guess men and women rely upon for, you know, outlets in terms of emotion and all those sorts of things. And then when that's taken away, wow, you know, it becomes real raw. And then you, you know, realize that, that that was part of who you were and now what is you. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's a super, super um, hard journey to take but it's something that I guess you know makes you grow and all these amazing things come out of it yeah definitely I, I, I have a way bigger purpose than smashing people apparently <laughs> <laughs> 
making it's delicious nice. keto snacks and yeah. foods. <laughs> yeah, so in like incorporating my my body work and stuff with the food has been amazing. Um, I got my Sonos just turned on. I got to turn it off. Sorry. So. That's all right. Um, yeah. So your um, so body body work. Just explain to me a little bit about what that looks like for you and what you do with that. So um, I I work with the LA Kings um, for a couple seasons and the St. Louis Blues. I also worked with like the some of the Yankees baseball team and uh, I traveled around uh, with the Blues. We made it to the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs and just working on like 20 athletes in a day in the middle Whoa. of town, just like cranking, like incredible schedule, like huge um, responsibility taking care of these guys and being like the sole therapist for like a whole professional hockey team. That's um, crazy. That's physical yeah, work, isn't it? Super intense. And I have a guy that, like, I have several athletes I'm still working with, but, like, one of our main athletes, is, his name's Nate Thompson. He plays for the Flyers. He's in the playoffs right now. Mm -hmm. And kind of, like, transitioning him onto the food mm. and, and then doing all the other, like, sauna, cold plunge and getting him, like, on the proper schedule for his recovery and incorporating, like, treatments and traveling with him. Um, he's 36 now, mm -hmm. and, like, he's – like the number one fittest guy and like is he's going to be in the league till he's like 45 like that's wow. his goal you know he yeah. wants to keep hockey and he's doing amazing he scored two goals already in this playoffs and like it's just super fun to watch these guys like perform and seeing like how much more i can push them with my treatments when they're on the diet Mm. And if they're not on the diet and I start doing like treatments, I can just feel their tissue starting to just get inflamed. And I have to tell them like, Hey, like, I'm not trying to sell you, but I'm just telling you that like, <laughs> your be puppy, good. I have to stop, you know, yeah. like your tissues all inflamed. So, you know, working in like these protocols, it's, it's really profound. Mm, that's incredible. And having that sense of, um, you know, touch, to actually sense that now because of, you know, how long you've been doing this. It's amazing that you can actually, you know, see that in these athletes. And for them, I guess, you know, longevity is one of their biggest main goals, isn't it? So, you know, no injuries, longevity, which means low inflammation at all times and recovery. That's it. Yeah. That inflammation is just, it's, it's just incredible. Like how, um, insidious it is and like how it affects everything and mm. it's so ingrained and it's so pervasive in our culture with with what we're eating yeah you know? eating and drinking yeah. like you say yeah exactly so before before we get into um you know to be keto and, and sort of a little bit more around that tell me a bit of your own perspective on the keto diet and sort of what you found you know Obviously, with a lot of um, clients of mine, um, you know, colleagues of mine tried keto, always say it's really hard at the start. Um, and I think it's more so those withdrawals and not actually doing it 100% right with minerals and salts and, you know, all those things. And then obviously there's that transition to looking at the better quality foods and all those sorts of things. Plus, you know, where they're at, how long they want to be on it for, you know, so in your idea, what, what sort of, and, and even from a athlete perspective, how long is the keto and where, where should people start? And what are the key kind of fall downs, I guess, from what or starting keto? Yeah. I mean, you nailed, you nailed like huge ones for, for us. Like, I mean, it's it, one of the big ones is just like keeping it interesting. Cause like your nutritionist can have the most beautiful functional plan and it's just not good. No, it's not it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know? So one of the big things that we work on is just like keeping everything like interesting and alive. And, um, I go to the farmer's market, uh, once a week and then I, my chef gets incredible produce, um, to the kitchen and we put together aside from like what's on the website for our super fuel. We also run like a really exclusive high end, uh, meal program for athletes and oh, celebrities amazing. For, uh clients and we yeah. we basically like cap our client base at 10 
wow. and we provide like incredible service. Um, so I pretty much have put together like a, what you talked about was like, you know, Celtic gray salt, like especially in the beginning, like yeah. amping up the salt content, uh, keeping it super interesting, mm -hmm. making, and, and we hide fat everywhere. So mm -hmm. super fuel is one of our products and you wouldn't know it's just like a giant scoop of butter. Like, yeah. that's it. It looks know? so delicious. I was looking at it and all the flavors and the mushrooms in it. I was like, Oh, yeah. I need <laughs> yeah. some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we basically, we make like little truffles that are like high fat emulsions with ghee. We do um, like really quality heritage uh, acorn fed pork. That's amazing. Um, from Marin Farms, we get grass-fed beef, like carbon positive, and that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, like, there's just, like, the environmental impacts, and, like, we're thinking about, like, utilizing the whole animal, making offal sausage, and getting produced, like, what's good for the planet is good for us. Mm. You know, it's pretty basic, like, you know, monoculture, grain-fed, like, beef is terrible for us, and it's terrible for the environment, but pasture raised, organic, free range like beef is really good for us. And it's actually sequesters carbon, which is amazing. That's so the cool. The trick is to, to consume the whole animal. Yeah. Because 78% of America's waste is food. Mm. So the, one the, of the, the key nutrients are in all those parts that we throw out as well, isn't it? Exactly. Like there's so many nutrients in there to get. Yeah, exactly. So we try to like make them the most palatable we can. So we make um, like liver meat um, blends with tons of herbs and hemp hearts in sausages. And then we smoke them and mm. they're super yummy, you know, with like pork tallow and like just make them really unctuous and fatty and yummy. And um, there's just a way to like kind of handle everything that makes it much more like palatable for the American palate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then just like saying like this, our food, food is too cheap. Mm. Like it should be expensive. Like of the things that like we need to focus on is like sleep, food, safety, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but food yeah, yeah. is like not important. No, actually I've never, so never heard it put that way you know a lot of the time food you know like you buy you buy organic food and you know you can't um <laughs> it's too expensive you can't guarantee that you, you know going to be able to afford that every month I'm like well well you can't guarantee that your health is going to be good all the time if you don't do that so that's if you spend good money on your food and I I totally agree with what you say actually it's 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 um pretty insightful in that in that way that you know, if you're spending your, your good money on your, on your good food, then that's, in a way, your vitamins and your minerals and your fuel. And why wouldn't you want to fuel your body well? So exactly. that's super important. I love that. Yeah. I told my guy, like, you know, he has a Ferrari. And I'm like, dude, you're the Ferrari. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, like, your brain, like, your, you know, like, your energy that you put into this planet, like, do, you are the Ferrari. Like, we got to put premium fuel in you. It's just such a... Yeah. obvious thing i can't believe we're having this debate you yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah and same with like people's animals you know they, they sometimes feed their animals better than they do themselves you know their pets and yeah. and their cars yeah look after their cars way better than they look after themselves like how does that make sense like, <laughs> yeah. yeah wow all right so in terms of what you see in these athletes and people you speak to what how do they fall down other than the making it interesting um, you know, getting it to taste good and be palatable. What are the other things that you see being big failures in, in a sense? Well, I think like for, for me, I look at it like it's all these opportunities, like mm. from a product perspective kind of. Yeah. And like from like these little hacks and maybe this is like, shouldn't share it on the podcast, but I'll just do it like, anyway. <laughs> <share something>. but, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's like if a guy is is addicted to fruit you know like we can we can make these gummies with grass-fed gelatin and apple cider vinegar and it's like you're eating fruit but it just doesn't it's it's all these amazing things in these gummies mm. like gelatin little gummies it mm. feels like you're eating fruit but there's no carbohydrates there's tons of superfood like 
in it, like calms your gut. So the way I look at it is like these little opportunities to give my clients like awesome. And it, it just like, it's like another invention. Like mm. everything is a new invention, like yeah. custard. Like you can make incredible custard, like keto custard. Just make ice cream base, like heat up heavy, raw heavy cream, whisk in really good eggs. And you can add like lemon juice or um, cacao. We did a passion fruit one the other day. Yum. And it, you, know, you can turn them in an ice cream machine and make like really good ice cream or you just have custard. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I see them like, like, I know your laser beam is pointed at this thing. And I just want to like tip it to this. <laughs> Love it. You know? Yeah. So I yeah. just try to like, just kind of like deflect them off of the crap to yeah. like something that tastes almost the same. And it's just not. And, and then the other thing is there's so many like garbage products out there. Yeah. You know, let's say keto on it, but it's got like, okay, what is that? Like, mm. what is in this? Like, what are all these things that are in this thing? And I, and it's really frustrating for me, like to come into the, and even to name my company to be keto a while ago. And then to see like these like fibers that are stabilizing fat in a bar and they like totally tear up your stomach and give you horrible gas. And they're just like mm. kind of giving like this, this physiological chemistry, like name ketosis, like a really bad name. It's yeah. just chemistry. Like that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess it's like, like stay away from like, stay away from like things that are wrapped in plastic, probably pr pretty good rule that have like a lines of like ingredients. <laughs> you just have, like have no idea what they are. Like, so stick to whole foods and then don't think that you're eating pasta if you're eating zucchini. Cause it's not, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, it's that. just like a different yeah. thing. Like, who's it's not as good as pasta? Because it's not pasta, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not, I'm sorry. Um, you know, and then just kind of like eating enough salt. You got to get your minerals. You got to drink water. You got to eat enough fat. Um, like, these are the things that we build into our program, you know? So it just makes it like super training reels for our clients. They don't even know like, okay, you're great. You're at, you know, 3.3 or 0.5 or whatever one you know millimole of ketones great you're in buddy you did it you know mm. and they didn't even know that they did it because like we kind of held their hand and they just got all the things yeah but for someone that doesn't have that kind of support you know it's it's like if you start to feel like you're dragging or you feel dizzy you know like you gotta get good salt drink more enough water and eat enough fat because otherwise you are just starving to death mm. yeah yeah it's like <laughs> you, you know? literally need to eat more and then remineralize because your body is like excreting that and breaking it all yeah. down so yeah so we start people with like bigger portions in the beginning mm -hmm. and like make it like really comfortable and then just have them eat slow and stop when they're satiated and then if their goal is to lose weight then we just taper down the the portions as they go yeah because when you're in ketosis like you don't really think about eating yeah no you don't, don't. you are full. Yeah, yeah 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 so um you know that 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 famous keto flu so that's what you're sort of talking about there where you you know you feel dizzy you feel a bit run down you feel a bit crappy and that's you know that's the moment where you gotta look at am i eating enough and am i, am I having enough minerals and that's that's probably the key things for there now when you run these athletes and even yourself do do you have breaks off keto so like is there their breaks so what would be the recommended that you would say that be optimal for you and your athletes yeah mm. well it also depends on like like nate like you know in a game will drink um some like sugar water yeah you know like in the middle of like super high intensity like training yeah because like he's gonna rip here. through that sugar yeah you know and he's not gonna he's not going to get out of ketosis because it's gone. Mm -hmm. The sugar's gone. So performance is different, you know, from, you know, and then if you, if like we work with a guy who um, does like jujitsu and like, he's awesome on just like a grinding, like, like low flow of keto diet, like super mm -hmm. high fat. Mm -hmm. So I think it just depends on kind of like what, what kind of activity you're doing. Yeah. 
Um, but cycling out, I, I feel like we're not counting really, we're not counting calories. Yep. Which is good. I don't like doing that. That's just boring. It like doesn't work. It's silly. Like you're done eating when you're done eating. <laughs> I totally so, agree. <laughs> you know? Um, and then if you're really feeling like drawn to eating carbs, like awesome. Like let's cycle in some of the, of the least inflammatory carbohydrates mm-hmm. and let you be out of ketosis for a while. And then you're going to start to feel probably like a little bloated mm-hmm. and a little bit like you're not focused, but we kind of get them back in before that happens. Yeah. 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 So I think it's nice to come out, but I usually only come out for like a week, but that's just me. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I like, I like to let it be more intuitive. Yeah. Like, oh, you want to go back more high fat. Awesome. So then we just like cut out the carbs again. Yeah. And I think education is the key, right? Like a lot of people go carbs. Well, you know, and still to this day, I have clients coming in saying to me that I've got carbs. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut out the carbs. I'm going to cut out pastas and I'm going to cut out bread and cakes. <laughs> I'm like, well, vegetables have so many carbohydrates like that and fruits, obviously. So I think education is the key for people to know actually what are these things that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, so for you, vegetables, you know, how many, you know, obviously quality is huge, like we've spoken about before, the, the animal products as well as the vegetables, you know, organic obviously is going to be much better for all over health. Like vegetables, how much, how much would you say that you have in your day and what types of vegetables would you be adding in? So we have a, we have a list. It's pretty basic. It's just approved, yep. semi-approved and not approved. Yeah. And you know, you can still have some non-approved foods, but I'd say it's just like your budget mm-hmm. and you can use it how you want to use it. So if you eat a ice cream, mm-hmm. like you do not have anything left in your budget. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is my yeah. ice cream. But um, I think I, in the beginning, like I'm very anecdotal. And I mm-hmm. like very much like a cook mm-hmm. and I'm not like a scientist and I try to stay in my lane as much as possible. Yeah. So my favorite thing and what I like to get are parameters from my clients, what they love and then parameters from like the experts on what is not okay. Mm-hmm. And then I just like push out like the most delicious things I can with the parameters. Yeah. You know, so in the beginning, I ate a ton of vegetables because I yeah. felt like I just needed to put things in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would just like blanch veggies and like dip them in our ghee um, mm-hmm. sauce that we make, mm-hmm. like curry and barbecue sauce and different things like oh, that. Oh, yum. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, like carciferous veggies, mm-hmm. just like we just crush them, mm-hmm. like just eat. If you feel like you need to eat, just eat. Like our gummies are just grass-fed gelatin. Um, nuts are semi-approved, so we give them a little jar of like egg white candied nuts, mm-hmm. and like that's all you get for the day. You yeah. can't just eat nuts all day mm. because Which, that's too much. Carb, too much. A lot of a lot of people eat a lot of nuts on keto. Yeah, and that's probably another fall down. That is a, for sure. Like they're packed with. <sighs> They're just, they're too good. It's too much. It's just like too easy and they're too snackable. And if you have a giant bag and they don't portion them, like it's just, it's, they're going to knock you out. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Absolutely. And when you think about like how it takes you to get it off, like the tree nuts, like what it would take for you to crack one of the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, and you cannot. So what our thing is you can't crack into the second jar. Yeah. Till the next day. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally like the challenge that we have in our society now yeah it used to be getting into the nut and now it's not opening the second container of nuts <laughs> it's just as hard <laughs> but it's a totally different mechanism yeah you know yeah so yeah it's incredible you know um so yeah um i would say I don't even know. I remember exactly what we were talking about. Oh. <laughs> veggies. So what other veggies would you say are like, yeah, go for okay, it. So, yeah. So like we do a lot of zucchini, eggplant, yep. uh, peppers, but we like take the skin out or like the little veins out the skin off. 
Um, we do, like right now, tomatoes are just insane. So we do mm-hmm. tomatoes. Um, but not a ton of tomatoes because they, they do have a little bit of sugar in them. Um, we do cabbage. We do tons of mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Like we have these providers that get us literally lion's mane mushrooms that are like this big. Whoa. Like they're just, the mushrooms, the way that they're starting to like do these mushrooms, it just blows my mind. Yeah. Like we get full uh, cordyceps mushrooms that we mix in with our bone broth. So you do one of our bone broths and you blend it with a like a miso truffle, mm-hmm. dump it over uh, cordyceps mushroom noodles. Oh my gosh, you're making me so hungry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like just like explaining to them too, like the, the power of mushrooms and how yeah. they like have these incredible effects to open up your lungs and your brain and like fight your like for your immunity you know and like how we handle like these huge chunks of like shaga mushrooms and we put them in our bone broth Mm. and then we press you got to pressure cook them to get the enzymes out of them you know so good well world needs more mushrooms i think all different types of mushrooms yeah they're incredible for sequestering carbon carbon as well like Mushrooms are amazing. Mm, so, so we cool. use, a ton of, use a ton of mushrooms. Um, yeah, pretty much like any like like green, like all the greens, mm-hmm. you know, like leafy greens. Yeah. Uh, we make uh, MCT oil dressings mm-hmm. and full fat raw cream, like ranch. Like ranch dressing is amazing when it's like made with like cultured like sour cream and raw cream, you know? Yum. Gosh, yeah. I got to get myself over to America and try all this. <laughs> <laughs> You're just yeah. teasing me now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Oh, cool. These are, these are like the, you know, veggies. We have a list. We stick to the list. But like all the other things, like even just like raw cream, we use a good amount of raw cream and my clients are like, I'm lactose intolerant. I'm like, well, that's cool because there's very little lactose in very heavy cream, yeah. especially raw cream. Like, yeah. I'm like, just give me a chance. Just give me a chance with this ghee that we took all the lactose off. Yeah. Give me a chance with this cream that's a very little lactose. Yeah. And then they, 99% of the time, like, we're, we're like, I'm not bloated. Like, I don't feel it. Like, yeah. Yeah. So Drink important. Skim milk, it's such a twist as you in the mind. Mm think it's like got no fat or something it's gonna have less lactose so it has way more lactose Mm -hmm. yeah 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 absolutely and that's where butter and ghee are just so powerful for people who have any of those milk intolerances that you know can really change the game for them and good quality ones because i guess you know a lot of people will react to those different qualities just because of the way that it's been processed as well so super important you know, what I love about keto is that it is so many light, nice, beautiful leafy greens. It's, it's so cool. That's what I love about um, people eating keto, as long as you're doing it right. And I think it's with anything. It's very individual. People need to be looking at their own circumstances and then be able to make that decision of when or how long or when to come off or what they need and listen to their body as well. So there's, I guess, all those, those circumstances around the keto. And that's why I think people fall down so much is that there's that education and awareness not there. Yeah. And you can still indulge, you know, like every once in a while, you can still like at a birthday party, have a piece of cake, but like at some point you're just like, you know, auntie, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to have any mashed potatoes. Like I don't, I love you. And this is not like personal. Like I'm not, I'm not upset with you. I just don't <laughs> want, I, you know what I mean? Cause like my family is like, they look at me like I'm crazy and I'm like, like, I look at me, look at like, look at what I did. Yeah. Like, I just don't want any fucking mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so right. Like people do so much these days to please other people. Whereas yeah. we're not pleasing ourselves or looking after ourselves as much. I don't think, you know, with the jobs that we do, we don't have passion for a lot of things. We're saying yes too much. We're doing eating things just because of other people and, and pressures. When we were looking, if we're looking after ourselves, we'd show up so much better. We'd be so much happier and obviously be able to sustain our physical body so much better. 
and not be grumpy because we're feeling pain or can't think straight, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, you're not drinking? What happened? Like, this is good. Like, it's yeah. good. You yeah. know, like, it's good that I'm not eating this cake. Like, this is a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah. and like, I think it's really powerful for us to just like, if you have this awareness and like, you can stand up for other people too and like say like hey like it's so hard to like convert people like to preach at people mm. and like i ran into this for years like my mom who was struggling she actually passed away from cancer mm. and like this is one of the things that drove me into like this whole diet yeah um was like me like preaching at my mom and mm-hmm. like telling my mom like all this stuff and like it doesn't work like that yeah. Like that's what I'm learning more and more. It's like you really just have to lead by example and like really just like try to make um just stand up for like yourself and like make these decisions consistently and like it does people will gravitate towards you and ask you like your auntie will come over and be like, Can you tell me about that? Because uh something happened here, you know? <laughs> and, then you, and then like then all of a sudden you have like a lane to like express something. But if you're the person like standing, which I have been, mm. like talking down to everyone and like standing up on my pulpit and like, yeah, it doesn't work. No, I think a lot of people go through that initial stage. And I did too, back in the days when I was onto something good, you know, you get so passionate and you're like, this needs to be shouted from the top of the roofs and I need to tell everyone about this. But yeah, like you say, that psychology of people, they don't work like that. They want to look at something and go, oh, that's good. I want to make my own mind up about that. And then, oh, now tell me more. And it happens so often with people, you just see like the following of the crowd or following of the person that they want something that they've got. And that's the best way to grab people. And that's, yeah, it's just a lesson that I think a lot of people learn along the way. If, you're, if you've come out, a, you know, a good thing, <laughs> you're yeah. like, yeah, that's just live by example now and people will, will pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, can you tell me about your practice? Like what, what exactly you do? And So I'm a naturopath here and I like, so, so I have a multitude of different clients that I see on a daily basis. Um, I also lecture and um, supervise in the student clinics here for the naturopathic students. Um, yeah. And I, I write courses for myself and also for home hope org, which is health optimization um, medicine and I work with um, colleagues in the US with that as well um, so I've got a, a lot of different things I'm doing I'm doing my master's in nutrition <laughs> human nutrition as well crazy stuff which is interesting but again it's a lot again it's a lot of mainstream knowledge that I fight against and just having to do assignments because of the fact that they want and require certain things so it's challenging yeah. me I can't shout at the top of my and my lungs in <laughs> in the courses that they put out these days, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, my practice, you know, various different things we use for treating here, you know, obviously supplements, diets, herbal remedies, um, compounded nutrients. Yeah. So it's, it's very varied and we use lots of different testing and um, labs that we have for very various markers as well as um, compute complete nutritional analysis as well, which is the health optimization medicine. So yeah, I I would say I keep interested <laughs> because it's so varied. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Yeah. So do you do you like prescribe? Is a ketogenic diet something you would prescribe to like a client? And what are the parameters that you would like look for, or where you would steer someone not towards ketogenic diet? Yeah. So I guess it's um, the I I have a big part for um, why people are doing things. So what I want to know is. Um, are they going to stick to it? Do they have enough knowledge for them to be carrying forward and do it safely? And um, do they have um, enough education from me and resources from me? And are they um, at a state of health that they can actually handle the the, the keto? Because I get varying degrees of illnesses and diseases coming through my doors. So some of the, some people just don't have the vitality, let alone the um, ability to concentrate on something new so it's building them up first so with those people i wouldn't probably go towards a keto um you know a lot of women i do stand, tend to be a little bit more cautious with because in my experience if done the wrong way keto can mess with hormones for women even more so than men so that's something that i'm very aware of 
Um, so it's just more so introducing more really good carbs um, or carbohydrates at and even the end of the day for women. So it's sort of more like a transient keto throughout the day that I find works really yeah. well for women. Yeah. Um, so you like, yeah. will still incorporate like um, like healthy fats throughout the day, and then and then in the in the evening for like recovery and pre sleep, you'll you'll add in some carbs. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I find that for women, like men and women, very different in our physiologies. And so I find that works really well. Whereas men, I find, can eat a really high protein fat meal at nighttime and they'd be absolutely fine. So, um, you know, and different stages of the month for women in terms of their cycle is really um, something to be aware of as well. So, like you say, it's intricate, it's activity levels, it's health levels, and initially it's sort of where they're starting at. But I think education is a key with a keto because a lot of people will go off the internet, Google, you know, and just, oh, well, we're going to start a keto. And then two weeks later, I'm feeling awful, can't do it because there's bitsy information out there. You know, you don't get everything in one website article. <laughs> you definitely need to get some professional advice or at least someone to help you get started. So, um, yeah, big believer in that, like that empowerment and education. Yeah, it's incredible. We take one like very intensive client at a time mm. along with like our other programming that we just like get the people the food mm -hmm. but if we take someone from like zero like it takes me like i'll spend like three out four hours maybe even six hours with a client a week yeah wow you know and like dig in and like we dig That's in a, a lot of other things but we sauna we cold tub i do body work yeah. but like yeah. we're the whole time like it's like kind of centered around like what is a good piece of meat like how do i handle it mm -hmm. like where does it come from like mm -hmm. you know like there's and you we at least maybe you think like it's second nature, but then you start saying things to people and you realize like they have no idea. No idea. Yeah. The you know? More and more I'm in my practice, you know, that the more and more I get surprised by the things that people are saying <laughs> and that don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's six yeah, hours. That's incredible for spending time with your clients. Like that's what everyone needs. That kind of attention and that kind of learning and teaching because we don't get taught that in school or early age. Yeah. So we just take one. I mean, I just take one at a time. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Just, there's so many other things going on, you know, um, with like the super fuel and, and our meal programming. So for me, I just, and then keeping the integrity high, we only take 10. Mm -hmm. So you look at like meal prep programs where you get like this plastic container of food mm -hmm. and like God knows like where it come from, where it came from and like what kind of plastic it's sitting in and you put it in the microwave. Oh, I know. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. like, there's, how many meal plans are like that? Oh, like, all, almost all of them, right? Yeah, right. So, you know, my guys, my staff, like, they're running to take care of ten. Like, it's a lot of work, you know, yeah. to get fresh fruit prepped and like get it, you know, in these containers that are mm -hmm. like we can put in the broiler and make them like the veggies crispy and like all the things that you need to do to keep everything like yummy. Mm. Like it takes, it, it takes like a team. Yeah, absolutely. Just take care of 10 people when, you know, the competition is out there, like just like cranking out these bags. Yeah. To the With masses. poor quality. Yeah. Well, poor quality yeah. and, and, and really relatively low nutrition. <laughs> yeah. 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 And wow. it's, you know, it's incredible. And that, that's not even, like touching like the the costco packed meat section yeah you know yeah where like 90 percent of people go to get like their food mm. i oh. had a costco i had a costco short rib a while ago and it was so gross <laughs> to feel like how like like soft and like, there's just like no texture and like, once you start eating like really good meat and then you eat not good meat and you feel like, it's just like not even alive anymore. Mm. It's so like fatty and weak. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's amazing. Yeah. When you get the, um, the taste for good quality of anything, you can definitely be 
very, very aware of all those differences. But the problem is, I think a lot of people have never actually one seen or, or tasted what it looks like to have good quality food, like the top quality food. And you, you need to have that, like you deserve that. And two, people don't know what it feels like to actually feel good because not many people have actually been in optimal health for their whole life because of the poor nutrition and poor lifestyle habits. So yeah, to get people to feel that and then know where to get back to, I think that's invaluable. Totally. I, I never real, I didn't realize how, how crappy I felt for so long and how mm. much I had to overcome every morning to just like stand up straight and get out of bed and like stand up straight. My back hurts so bad. Mm. And then like, I would just like be eating Cheetos and drinking whiskey, <laughs> like just carrying I'm wondering why. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, it was, it was crazy. And then when I got sober and I got cleaned out, and I saw all this potential in me and I cleared up my head and I started getting focused and like all these things start falling into place. And then if I slip up and I have something and I'm like, I'm like kind of like throwing up, mm. you know? And I'm like, I can remember feeling like this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it was just the normal way that I felt like I was just kind of like felt like I could throw up all the time. Mm. You know? it's amazing what we can put up put up with yeah. yeah like our body can actually sustain so much trauma and damage and to keep, still keep us going it's incredible just, <laughs> oh, and just like get up at six and like shake it off and get in the shower and just start your day yeah and then and then when you put together like you know like three months of like a good protocol you know and and you see the momentum you build off of that, like mm. that pays you yeah. in so many ways. Like it, it, it monetarily pays you, like you will, you will succeed on it, mm. you know? And, and not only that, but just like the moment, like just like how much better you feel and all the things that you get out of it. It's just like, that's what keeps, that's what I want to keep my clients like on track. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I want to get shredded. Like, okay, you probably will. Like, it's a byproduct, but you're going to feel amazing. Yeah. Because there's other ways to get, like, cut up or whatever, like, <laughs> like whatever, like, people want. Like, there's other ways to do it that just are not healthy. Yeah. You know, but the byproduct of, like, like sustaining this over, like, a year, it's just, in, it's incredible. And, having a good body or whatever is it's it's just once you experience it you realize that it's is really not the most important part of like everything that like that I thought when I looked at myself in the mirror like if I could just be skinny <laughs> I could just like whatever like everything would be good and you know you know it's just a weird it's such a weird psychological thing you know that yeah. like yeah. once you get something you realize that like the thing that you wanted wasn't the thing that you that you thought you wanted wasn't the thing that you really wanted yeah you know what i mean yeah and, absolutely yeah. yeah it's like though you know when you're um you're feeling you're feeling so low you kind of focus on the external and media doesn't help you know we look at all these amazing bodies that are fake and and washed over and you know all these sorts of things and we compare ourselves constantly but really like this vehicle that we're in, if we can do what we want to do and move with freedom and without pain and without inflammation and be able to run about our day with the most amazing energy and then have the most amazing sleep, uh, that's really all that matters. And, and, and what our muscles and all that look like, then it, it is a bonus. It's a bonus that then they can be strong to be able to do all the things that we want to do. May, may it be you know, exercise or fitness or sports or anything like that. So yeah, it's, it's some, definitely a different psychology. It's like that reverse way of looking things rather than the outside first. It's the inside to the outside. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so hard to explain it to people, like to, to get the point across, you know, like you would, like I would do, I would have done anything to get, to get the fat off of my stomach. Like I would have mm. like, you know, made a deal with the devil, like whatever I gotta <laughs> do, you know, but and then I realized that like being like puffy and, and, and overweight and all these like things, like 
it was it's such a it's such a bizarre tra- thing to go through you know like to go through this rebirth and realize like you express like what's inside of you and like what your real potential is you know mm-hmm. it's it's an incredible thing and like to now like be trying to put the key in to other people and like like help fire up their engines you know yeah yeah, you have the passion and the energy and the will and to be able to do it and sustain it to then be able to share it. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's overwhelming, right? Mm. It's, it's like an overwhelming thing to, to like even have like 10 people and like to try to, to try to like take in these 10 and say, okay, like I, I got, I got you guys. Yeah. 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 You know, and that's the way that I look at like our meal program. Yeah. It's, um it's overwhelming it's mm. hard it's so hard yeah but the you reward know, i guess you know it would pay off amazing. right you see these yeah. people just flourish oh yeah and like that's why we just need like more soldiers out there that like understand you know like to say like it's like fat doesn't make you fat no <laughs> you know the, the research is now coming out saying that they've taken all that back they've gone oh whoops sorry guys actually makes not bad you know, like they straight up lied to us like the biggest yep. company in the world like bamboozled us for mm-hmm. 30 years yeah you know and like we have to change the freaking ethos you yep. know like yep. we have to keep like this this messaging yeah, because yeah. their propaganda is a lot to get over on our side, and and we run into it every day, right? Like, absolutely. And those people, they still believe everything they've heard 30, 40 years ago, and that's what sticks around. You still hear those old stories and those old propagandas coming out every single day. You're like, oh, not this again. My gosh. Okay, let's squash that one. <laughs> uh, you know, like it's okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. Like, that's why I called it to be keto. Mm. Because like, like keto's whatever, but it was more just like, like to just put my, draw like a line in the sand and like say like, this is like physiology and chemistry. And like, I just want to make a statement. Well, well, what about keto? Okay, let's have a conversation. Great, we can talk about it right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just like fires up that conversation like right off the bat, we don't have to like mess around. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. My, my biggest thing is I love getting real straight away with people and that, that's, that's what it's all about, right? We don't really have the time to fluff around with people, with conversations that aren't really worthwhile in this world. You know, why, why not get to the real stuff straight away? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, Nate, can you tell me a little bit about where to find you, where to find to be keto, um, you know, what you've got coming or what's going on in the next, year or so i guess or even in the future um so all the yeah. listeners so we have to be um mm-hmm. we have our super fuels um we have celtic gray salt uh like vanilla espresso with Whoa. the mushrooms and then you just bake take like a big scoop of that you put it in your coffee or tea the little like raw cream and blend it in your coffee and it's just like a frothy delicious coffee we so we have chai chocolate and vanilla espresso and we're yeah. shipping those nationwide in the u.s and Amazing. there's a lot more in the hopper but we we have this one national product that we are super um, excited about um and it's like full integrity and, and all the best ingredients and stuff so amazing yeah. Well, I thank you so, so, so much for sharing all of your insight, your story, your knowledge. Um, I would love to keep in contact and see what's been, what's in the pipeline for you because I just love your ethos. I love your ethics. I love all that you're about and helping people in the way that you do. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor. <laughs> so uh, we'll chat soon. Okay, great. Bye.